Centered is unique in a couple of ways. First of all, it's, um, I usually am here on the, in New England on the Atlantic coast and I've always done land for 30 years. I've been doing landscapes and seascapes and in quilts. And this one is actually California. It's uh, a California State Park, Montaña de Oro, and it was, I saw it on the way to teaching in Santa Barbara. So that's odd for me. Uh, the other thing that's interesting is it's a, not a panorama. It's not the horizon and the sky and the beach and all of the elements. It's pretty simply just looking at that wave because the waves were crashing really big the day that I was there. And so I did sketch as always, and I did a photograph that I used as the basis for the quilt. But this one was for me really understanding how a wave works and then trying to show that in the fabric dyeing that I do in the quilt. So both were a little, make it sort of, it's a favorite of mine actually. <laughs> I do like it. Ebb and flow. I mean, I think the reason that I thought, I know there are so many literal and non-literal ways you can talk about ebb and flow, but the fact that this wave was at the turning of the tide, so it was just the time that that water was turning back to the land and switching, it just felt like it was appropriate for ebb and flow and there could be a very specific uh, literal interpretation of the ebb and flow, so that's why I entered it. I'm hoping that someone realizes how much that I am connected to the world around me and how much that is important to me. My landscapes are usually just a very beautiful moment in a way, but the subtexts are huge, like environmental issues. For me, it's a lot about time. Nature marks time for us, days to nights, tides, ebb and flow. So for me, it's important. It's a way of stopping time for a moment and having someone stop for a moment and experience that moment rather than running and running. So it's, it's, it has a sense of time to it too. Though the beautiful part of it, what I love is maybe conjuring up memories. It's often a specific place. This one is named after the state park. And a lot of my quilts are very specific places that somehow, sometimes they conjure up memories for people of being there and what it felt like. And I like doing that too, or a similar place. It doesn't have to be the very specific. So it's taking people somewhere where there's a calm, beautiful moment that they can kind of step out of wherever they are at the moment and kind of refocus on a bigger world. One thing I'm really grateful in this era of COVID that my studio's in my home and my dye studio's in my home. So I've been able to stay focused on work, which has been real sanity through this. And then to have opportunities like Ebb and Flow or other things that are coming up where the art quilt world is still trying to continue sharing and continue the, you know, the energy of people doing that. And I felt really badly for people that I know who, who are locked away from their studios and they don't have, have the option to do it. So it really has been a refuge for me, which has been good and time to think, but, but creative time, which is really good.